Hello captains of Armband welcome to another episode of Short Corners where we interview footballers managers coaches analysts scouts directors and even the players of various football clubs to bring the different aspects of the game closer to you so if you're a football enthusiast just like us and love to learn from football personalities make sure to subscribe to our channel and today along with us we have the pleasure to bring to you mr hiroshi miyazawa the assistant manager of isl club mumbai city fc so mr miyazawa how have you been very good thank you pleasure to be here the pleasure is ours sir to have you and i know you are in a very busy schedule so i will not waste any of your time and will stay move on to the talking point starting with as the assistant manager of mumbai city fc can you elaborate on the evolution of your role over the time and the key responsibilities that have shaped your managerial experience okay so in general assistant manager um any club in the in the world um just support head coach whatever he needs to do for the day by day work which uh, normally assess uh, our performance from the game and making plan for the training uh, based on our performance in the weekend and the deliver the sessions and and the game is on the on the game day uh but particularly most of the coaches and assistant role they taking the uh set pieces role as well which which is I'm doing here um however though to me i believe that most important role as an assistant manager is how you can bring the second opinion uh to the head coach you know um obviously the head coach's job is to decision making uh to help his decision making it's always i try to see a game and a training and play as a performance from a little bit different angle than uh, the head coach so therefore i can bring it's a little bit different uh, an opinion about how i see the game how i see the players performers and it, it it is actually doesn't really matter you know um my opinion the head coach uh is going to take or not but um i think all the head coaches will appreciate um the opinion from a completely different angle so that's that's how i see it as a system coach role having worked alongside this buckingham for 5 years what were the pivotal lessons that you learned from him and how did your professional relationship with him develop during that period okay uh, first of all there's an i um we are totally different personality and um the how we think um see it we we actually naturally completely different all right um so what i say about his relationship how we get through the, all the journey we had is actually from the experience experience we 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 learn from experience um but um you know we 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 taking the things and or challenges um completely different angle i think that complementing each other um then then come to the results however though however so one example that i like to uh mention about how he was um we 19 uh took 2019 so we we qualified for the fifa and uh, uh, 20 world cup in poland right and then we uh grouped and uh uh with the hondras and norway and um the uruguay right and um to so norway uh was a hallen was there and uh, uruguay was um N- nuno uh, nunes uh, the liverpool striker right so that before the tournament we analyzed the opposition and then we realized that how difficult um uh, competition is going to be for us right So then when you look at we look at, at the stats and then, and then FIFA report before the World Cup we go and uh, all the New Zealand teams not just on the 20 level 70 level and World Cup level uh the all the FIFA reports about the New Zealand teams about deep, deep defending block and less ball possession um direct the long balls and focus on the counter attack and the set pieces right every um to world the stage competition that reporter was exactly like that so then this is is a completely he he really wanted to change that he wanted to uh, approach the world cup with this new zealand team in a different way even after we watch norway and 
how hard on this is crazy strike on and knew this is really good. And doesn't matter what we're trying to do in the world stage, we go high press, okay, and try to have a more border position based football and more shots and um and working hard on the more than opposition. So what ends up what happened uh, to to set up the mindsets and the way we tried to play against these, you know, top nations was you have to have some guts, right? I personally, I didn't have a guts. I have a little bit more conservative way of thinking how we approach the World Cup, but theirs was a completely an opposite way, right? So then we beat Honduras in the first game as a 5-0, and we beat the Norways in 2 0, and then we already qualified the first two games. So that decision making he, he, he made, and then the guts he had, I totally admired him. So that was one of the experiences that we're working with him. I think that was the biggest one for me. Your evident off field camaraderie with the Mumbai City players is noteworthy in all the training videos and all those things. But could you shed some light on the critical factors? you consider for effective communication and relationship building with the players? I mean, in a professional environment, the man management is one of the the most important thing um, uh, that you have to do as a, as a coaching job, right? Um, so, but to have a relationship as a head coach, because I've got experience as a head coach as well, role, but assistant coach, or second assistant coach, um, can be quite a different, you know. So since I came to Mumbai City um, as a assistant coach, um, I try to approach, uh, to have a build a relationship player is a little bit more closer, friendly relationship uh, compared to the head coaches, right? And um, obviously I'm 14 now here as well, okay? So, so for 14 pe- players, um I have got uh, the similar sort of uh, prospect or, um, you know, the, the things they um, struggle with, especially playing the uh, uh, Indian football environment, I feel that too as a foreigner, okay? So uh, when I talk to the foreign players particularly, um, we can have a good discussion and a good relationship and an understanding each other as well. But also um, I was ex-players as well. So for that way, you know, all the sort of the matters and the experience and, and difficulties that all the young players in the Mumbai City, they have to go through, i already done it, right? So, but my stance is, is rather tell them what to do, I share my stories when I was a player. And then either stay, feel that and take it. You know, that's that's up to them. But I, I do share how I went through um, these experience and difficulties, um, you know, I had, to, I had to manage when I was young. I just to share my stories. And then how they how, how, how they take the, my stories, it's all up to them. Sometimes there are some changes that happen during the summer transfer window where some players go, some players come. But it's very hard to adjust to the changes if it happens in the middle of the season. But we have seen a whole lot of changes happen in Mumbai City FC, be it the coach, be it new players, some players moving out, some players coming in. But from a coaching perspective, not from the player perspective, the, because the players have a totally different way of coping to all the changes. But from the perspective of a support staff, from perspective of assistant coach, how do you cope with this sea of changes which happens in between the seasons? Because you don't have many training sessions, you don't have many what many gym sessions or what team building exercises that you get in the preseason. But again, you have to just go on with the show. So how do you cope with all those sea of changes which happen during the mid part of the season? Honestly, that's a good question. And uh, I have to say, to be honest, we are in the transition moment. You know, the, all the changes, you know, after the amazing season we had the last year. Uh, but we're in the, in, in the stage of the transition to reform the team and, and then get United together and uh, start winning again which is not quite happening at the moment, I have to be admit, right? Um, but um, I think we have got philosophy as a football club and uh, that there is a strong fundamental 
uh, we call it the platform. So already there for everybody, not just the players and the coaches and then our, uh, the backroom staff to perform. We, I believe, our platform, which this was a big part of it to to build a platform. So when everything settles and then those new players and new people settle in our environment, I'm sure our performance is going to go and hit again and it started getting the results. I've got no doubts about that. What motivated you to pursue coaching? And in what ways has your playing background influenced your managerial strategies and tactics? Um, actually, in general, I really enjoy helping the people. All right. So in that fact, actually, I want to be a teacher if I wasn't involved in the professional football environment, you know. So that's kind of the nature of my personality. Uh, and first of all, so that's my general motivation, just to helping, especially the young generation or the next generation, uh, if I could something influence their development, uh, not just uh, football level, but personal level as well. Um, but um, I, I'm sure my playing background is a core of my, uh, the coaching style, especially, you know, I, I was a center back. So until the last day I decided to, to retire, okay, um, more than 25 years of my playing career, every single day, I try to be the better center back, right? So through that process um, to be the better center back, um, those center backs or even any defenders that, you know, in the Mumbai City at the moment, they, they go through, I, I've done it already. So, and then in the ways, so I'm very critical um, about their performance. But, um, you know, I mean, it's a, such a joy because the, the most of the Indian players, unfortunately, the education when they were young, it's such a, you know, the, the limited. So they, they've got so much room to improve themselves, even though they, when they become provincial. You know, for example, my country, Japan, um, when you become professional, then you have to teach about this and this and the basic, and then you're already too late. The older coaches say that. But here in India, it's not too late. They've got the room. If you if you coach them, they can take it and they they, they, they can they can improve still some some of the basic stuff. So um, yeah, that's that's kind of um, the, what we've been doing or what I'm doing since um, day one um, when I arrived at the Mumbai City. Regarding young players, having coached at various levels, from youth team to senior clubs, how do you adapt your coaching style to cater different age groups and level of play? So obviously, different between a pro and a development, which is a youth uh, development coaching, is the biggest difference in a pro is about the results, right? But in the development, is about the process. So you have to be the completely different approach of the coaching when you're coaching the different environments. So that's what I learned from uh, when I coached um, completely different, uh, you know, from that. I actually coached from a very, very young. So like when I started, it was a seven, eight years old I coached and then I finished with a professional, at the moment it's a professional environment, you know. I've got one example that Sapri Sen, he's, he's obviously Indian background and um after that, you know, we talk about a World Cup. After that, he went to the Bayern Munich. Um, then he's still in the Germany as well. So when the Sapri was, um, when I first time I saw him, I say he was eight years old, and such a tiny, skinny uh, young man. Um, but I see him personally myself because in the, for example, in the team, um, he he wasn't the best in the way the effect. Uh, or do something. There are lots of other players that are more faster, stronger, who can score more goals. There are lots of players like that. But then um, he, I see he's uh, he's got some little bit special talent. So I sit down with, uh, with the parents and to make sure he grow and uh, healthy weight. So because he his eating habits habit was really really bad. At that time he couldn't eat any of the vegetables. But, you know, it's just, just little things. And so we sit down with the parents, and then this is a long-term project. And the, trust me, that talent I see is there is a, it's a little bit special talent. So that that kind of, you know what I mean? So if you're chasing the results like a professional, then you cannot develop like a player like a Sapri. 
this buckingham has mentioned your focus on diets and daily routines during our podcast and could you share some insights into this aspect and explain how it contributes to the well-being and performance of the players and i will just add this one growing up because i have seen many indian footballers playing in the local teams as well diet is very bad and i have even seen the organizers giving foods like biryani which is a very spicy and a calorie rich food and they are eating it within the half time then going on to play football so diet is always compromised in indian football at the very basic young level so you have focused a lot on the diets and the daily routines so can you sir explain a bit on this one i just wanted to ask this because i <laughs> I, I was lucky. I had, I had a very, very good mother who really cared about uh, my health, you know, not just the daily health when I was young. So he, she, he, she believed that, you know, I can be the very good, prof- you know, the athlete in one day. Um, but for example, you know, it, it, and not just on my playing time, it's like when a coaching time as well. There's some players like looks fantastic athletes and then looking good. But always get injury, and that uh, those players, when you research and, and all that, and then when they were young, they're not eating healthy, so they looks good, but very easy to fragile. They're easy to break. Um, that's not that's that's not what you want. You know what I mean? So then the day by day work, uh, day by day health, and what you eat and how you how you eat when you were young, um, to me is very very important. So my part is I still try to be healthy. But I educated because of my mother and um, because I educated when I was young. So, for example, if I had, um, after the game, after the drink of water and then there is a fizzy drink, I always pick up a water because just naturally um, that's the right thing to do. So, without thinking, you know. So, I think especially the young age, to get to good, right education, the right mindset about health, um, if you sit up when they were young, doesn't change in their whole life and then i'm lucky because i had a good mother um i'm still healthy and i look after myself reflecting on your tenure as the head coach of auckland united fc what were the key insights and the takeaways that have significantly influenced your coaching philosophy um i have to say one of the strengths and a unique um background that i have as a coach um uh, I played last three seasons in Australian Professional League, okay, and uh, after the J League, and I retired there. And um, but when I started coaching straight away, I started coaching nine, uh, eight, nine years old, right? And then from there, I coached pretty much every single age of group, and within the twenty years, and then in the finished, and uh, I become um, head coach of the New Zealand uh, sort of FA Cup. Um, championship. Um, so I think I really appreciate it. I started from a very, very young age group um, that I think were becoming my my one of the strengths um, so that I can do a lot of different uh, uh, way of uh, angle of the coaching because of that. I will just ask this question because it's related to a bit to Mumbai City FC. But leadership is paramount in sports, whether it is cricket, football, tennis, hockey, whatever. But what principles or lessons do you believe are essential for achieving success, both on or off the field, especially in this era of social media? I think good leader is a good motivator. And um, to get the results and all individual or or, or team success, um, I think the good coach and a good, which is a good leader, is a very very good motivator. And then he can make the, everybody understand how important the hard work is because the hard work you, you have to put a hard work, and there's no secret about that. But the good leader, good coach, um, can make them understand how important the hard work is. Uh, and then also on top of that, the showing how to do it, how to work it. So you, you can't tell just, just pushing them, hard, got to work hard. But you have to, to tell them specifically how. Um, I think the good leaders have got the skill to do that. Um, yeah, that's for me the one with the most important skill to be a leader in the organization. 
I think that's not just uh, football, I guess. For all the aspiring coaches looking to make an impact in the field, what advice would you offer to help them navigate and succeed in their coaching career? Um, it's actually it's a really, really big topic because then the, me, myself as well, are still searching, you know, the, my way uh, to be the better coach, right? Um, but to me, very simple thing. Um, you got the love and passion about the game. I think you you have it, and you don't have it. It's a massive difference for me. That's a that's a number one. Okay, so if you are whatever the good school coach or, or not such a good school coach, but if you have the love and a passion, the whatever you said, whatever you do, it's gonna be always powerful. You know what I mean? So that's for me the number one, and then number two to me it's originality. Okay, I mean you can learn these days because. You know, there's so many information you can access to it because of that's 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 these days. Um, but you keep copying what Jose Mourinho does, what you know Pep Guardiola does, what because at the end of the day, I cannot be the Pep Guardiola because I'm Japanese. I've got you know the uh, different culture. I came from different culture, different football background. No way I can be Pep Guardiola, but I can be the better version of Hiroshi Miyazawa. Or best version of Hiroshi Miyazawa. I think that's a really, really important thing. So that the way I like the coach is only me can deliver. And then I try to be in it that way. I think that's also powerful mm -hmm. as well. So captains, that was all for today. We need to end our session here. Thanks, Mr. Hiroshi Miyazawa, for being Thank here. you very much. Pleasure. And to all of our viewers, and the pleasure is ours, sir. And to all the viewers, thanks a lot for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and for more such podcasts like this. And until next time, it's goodbye from Ambad.